on my speaker. Oh, I hear you now. Okay, Rowan? Uh, hi, yes, this is Rowan. Okay. Yeah, it's nice to be on the show. Thanks for letting me talk to you. Uh, I wanted to uh, just kind of point out a, uh, the way that religions uh, typically use artwork and artistry in general, like music and mm -hmm. general, you know, theatrics, and how they use that to kind of, I guess, manipulate people. Uh, yes. I just wanted to see that y'all recognize that, like you know how that works and all, right? I don't know specifically what you're going to say, but I mean, yeah. Okay, would sure, you yeah. I'm, do I'm being that? vague in general here. Um, but, uh, specifically, though, uh, I kind of wanted to highlight the differences between the scientific method, uh, you know, using objective <coughs> data and all that sort of thing, falsifiable claims and all that, and comparing that to the method of learning uh, about the world like uh, art, uh, art as being totally different. And Are how, you going uh, I to? Think that I mean, I hope you're not going to say that that art is a waste of time and uh, and shouldn't be pursued in general because it's dishonest in some way. Because I'm sure not going to agree with you on that. Oh, I, I appreciate that uh, because I'm standing right here in front of my uh, tablet as I'm drawing, and uh, yes. you know, I, I myself am an artist, and so I'm thinking, like, what I'm wondering what you guys think uh, is the position, uh, the best use of art. Uh, as a means of learning, um, what what is good about it, uh, as opposed to like as being a different learning method than the scientific method, right? I See, have a great example. I'm going to look there, up while you guys talk. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there are a few things I have to say. One of them is that you seem to be coming from a place that it's necessarily wrong and bad to use emotions to get people to a certain frame of mind, uh, and I would say. That's going to happen no matter what. That's just a part of the human experience. Uh, and I think that sometimes we as atheists do ourselves a disservice um, if we are trying to be Spock-like in some way, if we're trying to be just emotional, or excuse me, unemotional and logical uh, and, and try to make everything a learning experience or something about reasoning. I think that... Uh, you know, appeals to emotion have their place. Uh, I think that uh, people are not only persuaded by the facts, uh, and I think that it's perfectly all right to make some kind of emotional appeal or present something really beautiful or moving uh, as a way to present your position. Now, having said that, I also think that you should back up what you believe with credible facts and evidence, but you should recognize that they are, uh, you know, they don't have to be working against each other. Uh, what do you think? <laughs> Go for it, guy on the phone. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, well, no, I, I really do appreciate your opinion there. Um, and I, I found it fun when I was taking the uh, science classes I had to take, uh, that I, w I would end up being the guy in the team uh, doing the illustrations of like the cells and things like that, and mm -hmm. that that was that was a fun, I guess, <clears throat> compelling way to learn about the world. But yeah. um, I think that when I was in college and surrounded by other artists, I found that, uh, and this is just going to be maybe offensive to some people, but I was surrounded by people to whom data and facts really weren't really. It wasn't what they cared so much about, that it, it was really easy to stir these people uh, emotionally. And yeah. that that emotional subjective experience was more important uh, to them than, than, say, an objective data. Y you know what I mean? You should care about both. Uh, and I think that the people who are uh, disregarding evidence and logic and science are cheating themselves of a you know of a pleasurable experience and part of the wholeness of experience of uh, experiencing what it is to be human just as much as they would probably say that people are cheating themselves when they don't care about art. Uh, interesting. I did okay. find the example, and I I, I, yeah. I, I want to apologize because while I was looking for this, I wasn't listening to the conversation. So I apologize <laughs> right. if um, any of this is, is not uh, quite as direct as I had hoped. Um, this comes from, this is an excerpt from Joseph Campbell that I posted actually recently. And uh, I like this because it's a great example of the different ways 
in which we communicate realities through symbols versus communicating realities through just pure raw data. So he's going into an interview. I'm going to let him speak for himself. I'm going to read this um, excerpt. It's from some, a section called Thou Art That. Uh, and he says, let me begin by explaining the history of my impulse to place metaphor at the center of our exploration of Western spirituality. When the first volume of my historical atlas of world mythology, The Way of the Animal Powers 7, came out, the publishers sent me on a publicity tour. This is the worst kind of all possible tours because you move unwillingly to those disc jockeys and newspaper people themselves unwilling to read the book um, they're supposed to talk to you about in order to give it public visibility. The first question I would be asked was always, what is a myth? That is a fine beginning for an intelligent conversation. In one city, however, I walked into a broadcasting station for a live half-hour program where the interviewer was a young, smart-looking man who immediately warned me, I'm tough, I put it right to you, I've studied law. The red light went on and he began argumentatively. The word myth means a lie. Myth is a lie. So I replied with my definition of myth. No, myth is not a lie. A whole mythology is an organization of symbolic images and narratives metaphorical of the possibilities of human experience and the fulfillment of a given culture at a given time. It's a lie, he countered. <laughs> it's a metaphor. It's a lie! <laughs> this went on for about 20 minutes. Around four or five minutes before the end of the program, I realized that this interviewer did not really know what a metaphor was. Oh my God. I decided to treat him as he was treating me. No, I said, I tell you it's metaphorical. You give me an example of a metaphor. He replied, you give me an example. I resisted. No, I'm asking the question this time. I had not taught school for 30 years for nothing. Quote, and I want you to give me an example of a metaphor. The interviewer was utterly baffled and even went so far as to say, let's get in touch with some school teacher. <laughs> Finally, with something like a minute and a half to go, he rose to the occasion and said, I'll try. My friend John runs very fast. People say he runs like a deer. That's a metaphor. As the last seconds ticked off That's the interview, so I replied, That's that is okay. not the metaphor. The metaphor is John is a deer. He shot back. That is a lie. <laughs> uh. No, I said, that is a metaphor. And the show ended. <laughs> what does that incident suggest about our common understanding of metaphor? Yeah. And I won't go on with it. He goes into some really great explanation about it. But the point is there's different ways of communicating something that is real. Yeah. You, you know what that lie metaphor thing reminds me of? Uh, Galaxy <laughs> Quest just had its uh, 10th anniversary. What Awesome movie. Uh, if you haven't seen it, then uh, da damn it, you should. Um, but it is a science fiction movie featuring some gullible aliens who believe that this show that's like Star Trek uh, is real. And they base their whole civilization oh. around it. And then uh, when the captain, played by uh, Tim Allen, is finally forced to reveal uh, that he, you know, he was acting and it's all sets and studios all along, they're really upset and their whole worldview is shattered. But, you know... Galaxy Quest is itself a great science fiction movie, I think, and um, it really speaks a lot to the importance of having fantasy and make-believe and playfulness that's not all tied to reality. And I mean, I'm a, you know, I'm a science fiction geek, more or less. Uh, I'm a big gamer, obviously. Not everything I I enjoy for its own sake has to teach me a valuable life lesson or ultimately show me something about reality for it to be a good thing that sticks with me. Yeah, I, do, I wanted to add, there is one little quote in, in, within the same article that I really like. He, he says that after the show, he says, it made me reflect that half the people in the world think that the metaphors of their religious traditions, for example, are facts. And the other half contends they are not facts at all. <laughs> As a result, we have people who consider themselves believers because they accept metaphors as facts. And we have others who classify themselves as atheists because they think religious metaphors are lies. <laughs> and I think it's like a, a really interesting point that, yeah, it's, I think if we understood these metaphors as metaphors and these mythologies as mythologies and could accept them as transferring information about the culture, right? They do transfer information about the culture. This is why different cultures have different mythologies and some have similar mythologies because those cultures are similar or different. 
Um, and so those, those stories do convey meaning as far as giving you information about the culture. But how that meaning is conveyed is very different than just pure data. Right, yeah. No, I, I can appreciate that a lot. I, I really like this, uh, what is it, Hero of a Thousand Faces? Is that, <laughs> yeah. Is that I, I actually like his interviews more than his books. I've read the book, you know, like about four of the books, and I, oh boy, I struggle with those books. But yeah. he, I do have the Bill Moyers um, interviews on, on DVD, and I love it. Yeah. Excellent. And so, I'm sorry, uh, Galaxy my, Quest must, have, must be having a 20th anniversary, not 10th. Yay. Man, my, I'm old. Uh, my thoughts on the matter were just that I'm older. Uh, art is an excellent means for showing something that was more like a subjective experience as opposed to an objective one, that uh, we experience things in a very way. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes, like Edward Munch's The Scream, oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. like that, they show how an experience feels rather than a photographic reality of what right. occurred. Yeah, and there's a reality in there. It's just about... It's, it's not, like you said, it's not fact. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a conveying real information, but it's not conveying, like, factual data. Interesting. All right. Well, thank you guys very much for taking my call. Sure. Okay. That was a great call. Thank you.